Hi everyone, I'm Shelly from There's No Place Like Home at redheadmom8.wordpress.com. One thing that I've noticed in my time spent around homeschooling circles, and I've been doing this for 10 years now, is that there seems to be two times of the year when parents are most likely to take their kids out of public school and to put them into a homeschool. And that is either right at the beginning of the school year or after Christmas break. So today I'm going to share with you some tips on transitioning from public school to homeschool. You know, this is one of those topics that I really wish I had paid more attention to when I decided to start homeschooling my kids. That's why I'm so passionate about just bringing forth these topics for you guys so that I can hopefully help some of you to not make some of the mistakes that I did. Because one thing that I've noticed is that a lot of people really have the same type of knee-jerk reaction that I did when I took my kids out of school to start educating them at home. And that was, and that is for a lot of people, is to go out and start getting all that curriculum right away. The very first thing they think of is, what curriculum should I use? What curriculum is good? Where should I get it? And while curriculum is certainly something that you do want to think about when it comes to homeschooling your kids, it is not the first thing that you should think about, especially if you are bringing your kids out of a public school environment and putting them into your home again with you all day long. So actually, the first tip I'm going to give you is you really, really need to de-school. Don't worry about curriculum for the time being. Yes, that time is gonna come. Yes, you're eventually gonna have to decide what it is or, or how you're going to approach learning with your kids. But for the time being, don't worry about curriculum because at this point in time, chances are that if you're like I am and haven't done all that much reading up on what homeschooling is all about, you might still be envisioning school as being, or homeschooling as something that can only look like what a school does. And that is something with textbooks and time schedules and sometimes even homework for, for some homeschooling families. And I just want you to realize that there is a broader area of homeschooling than just that that narrow school vision that a lot of people have. And de-schooling is the very first step that you can take to help you to understand how learning can actually happen beyond the scope of what the traditional school model looks like. And if you're not sure what de-schooling is, I'm not going to get into it too much today because I've done a few videos on it, which I'll link in the description box for you if you wanted to see more of what they're about. But basically what de-schooling is, is taking a period of time after you've taken your kids out of school and living as if school didn't even exist. You see, the thing is, is that your kids, they need to get used to being home again. And you, the parent, you need that de-schooling period too because chances are you just aren't really used to your child being home with you again. This is a transitioning period. This is a time when you really do need to start getting comfortable with one another again to the point of being with each other all day long, almost every day. Um, and so this is why it's so important that you don't jump right into homeschooling. You know, take them out of school one day, you jump right into homeschooling, and then you're already not used to being with, with your kids all day. Your kids aren't used to being ho home all day. And then you put something new like homeschooling, like a structured homeschool schedule into the mix, and that can often spell disaster. You know, that's really, really stressful. So de-schooling is a fantastic time for your kids to just relax a little bit because being in school it can be stressful for a lot of kids depending on on why you're choosing to homeschool your kids I do know that a lot of kids really do get a lot of anxiety from being in school and not even just for kids who have had a lot of anxiety for from from being in school but just learning to, I would say, find themselves while they are at home, giving them that time in which they can pursue their own interests without having to worry about being told by mom or dad that they're going to, you know, have a test on Friday, or you need to do pages two through eight of your history book, or you need to do numbers one through 40 on in your math workbook. They just need that time to really explore what it is that they want to know. Because a lot of kids who have been in school, 
haven't really had that time to to really find something that they want to grasp onto, something to be passionate about. Now, I'm not kidding anyone when I say that not all kids will eventually find that one thing they want to grasp onto that they're really passionate about. Some kids will find a slew of things that they're passionate about. And other kids will, will never really find any one thing that, that really seems to click, at least not for an, you know years. It might happen when they're older. But you really want to give your kids that chance to do that. And not only that, they have to just start to understand what the real world is, is really like. Because, you know, one of the things that a lot of people will say about homeschoolers is they will say to them, but if your kids are homeschooled, how will they get to know what it's like to be in the real world? But the fact of the matter is, is that putting kids in school takes them out of the world. Being inside a building all day with kids who are the same age as you from the same neighborhood, that is not a replica of what the real world looks like. Homeschoolers are in the real world, and sometimes that's something that a child who has been in school, especially if they've been in school for years, it's something that they really do have to get used to. And, you know, this de-schooling period is also an excellent time for you, the parent, to just observe your kids. And it's really also a great time to just really strengthen your resolve and your trust in your child because natural learning is something that will stick with your kids far more than any textbook assignment that they will have ever received. So I don't want you as a parent to panic that your child is going to forget everything in this de-schooling period and they're not going to learn anything in this de-schooling period because the thing is is that kids who have lots of opportunities at their hands, but also who are given the freedom to do what they wanna do for a while, are learning. And that's one of the things that you as the parent need to let go of in this de-schooling period, is you have to realize that learning can look a lot of ways. And a, most of those ways will not look like school, and that is perfectly fine. So in this de-schooling period, it's also an excellent time for you, the parent, to read up on homeschooling, read up on, diff on different homeschooling methods, um, watch your kids, see how it is that they like to do things. Do they like to do things with their hands? Do they like to read books? Do they like to watch documentaries? This is something that you can incorporate into your homeschool once you start actually getting into that regular homeschool routine. But yes, take the time to do it. How long you decide to do it really is up to you. And that is another video that I have uh, is about how long you should de-school for. And so I get a little bit more into that. So again, those links for de-schooling will be in the description box. But that's the first thing you want to do. Don't go to the curriculum right away. Give yourself and your child time to get them to get them used to being home. And you have to get used to them being home as well. And just let them relax and enjoy themselves for a bit. So now once you have gone through this de-schooling period and you're confident that you, you have an idea of how it is that your kids like to learn and you are just ready to get the ball rolling, you're used to each other, um, the very first thing I'm going to tell you is once you get started and start looking into that curriculum for your child is just try to keep those schoolish thoughts at bay. Because it can be very easy once you start planning for your homeschool to immediately pull back all those pictures of what school looks like into your head once you start thinking, okay, now we're really going to start homeschooling. Try to keep those thoughts at bay. Textbooks work well with some kids. I will say, though, that with most kids, they do not. And that is why it is so important that you have this idea of learning. You, you actually can see the reality of what learning looks like. And most importantly, that you see what it looks like for your child or for your children, depending on how many you have. So some ways that you can actually start thinking about homeschooling your kids, even before you get curriculum, is just by letting them be a part of your life with you. And this can easily happen in that de-schooling period, but it, it can carry over once you start technically homeschooling them. And this can be by just letting your kids accompany you to the bank, to the grocery store, show them how to do laundry, maybe have your husband show them how to work on the car, you know, just show them home maintenance, teach them to cook, play games with them. 
If your kids like to go to the library, that's even better for you because you can save so much money on curriculum if your kids will learn well with library books. And that is one of the best resources that a homeschooling parent can have is the library because there is such a vast array of books to choose from there. Plus, it really, really, really keeps your costs down, especially if you're homeschooling a large number of children. It really helps to keep those costs down. But yeah, the library is, is another great place to take your kids before you even get into that curriculum. If your kids like to be outside, let them play outside. You know, let them look for bugs. Let them go to the creek and look for frogs. All of these things are learning experiences and doing them with your kids are, are sure to help you see that they are taking in so much and these are the things that they will often retain more than doing say section 1.1 in their science book. So once you have actually, you know, decided that you're, go that you're going on what curriculum you're going to use, you know, and again, I want to say when you choose a curriculum with your kids or you choose a homeschooling method, you want to take how they learn into account. And this is really, really important because some homeschooling curriculums out there can be really, really expensive and it can be awful, downright awful, if you spend all this money on, on your curriculum only to find out that your kids absolutely hate it, you hate it, and that's why it is so important to not jump into those things right away. You really have to take, take into account both your child and yourself. You have to think to yourself, am, am I going to be able to, to handle teaching this to my kids or presenting this to my kids or preparing for it, depending on what type of curriculum you have. But once you do have that curriculum, you want to begin slowly then, and this is another tip that I have for you. Begin slowly. You don't have to jump in to doing all of the subjects the very first day that you start homeschooling. Start with maybe two or three things at a time and transition your way into doing all of the required subjects that you have to do. And you know, I have a lot of videos on how to even combine subjects so that you don't have to teach everything separately because I honestly believe that when you keep everything together as a whole, your kids are going to retain more, it's going to be more interesting, and it's not going to feel um, so choppy. It's going to feel more natural if you're not breaking everything down into specific subjects. But again, just transition slowly into that. And one benefit of that is not only will your kids get used to you being their teacher, you being the one in charge of their learning, but just not having it be for a bunch of different things. But you will also be able to see how it is that they are taking to those couple of subjects that you are doing with them. How do they seem to like the curriculum? What would you change about, about what you picked for them? Um, how is it that, that they seem to be learning the best? And this is also a great time for you as the parent to just get used to, to having that role. And I want at this point, I just really want to say that I think that one thing that we parents forget an awful lot is that we are our children's first teacher. You know, the parents are the first teacher. You know, so often parents will say, I'm just not qualified to teach my kids. You know what? You have been teaching your kids since they have been born. You have been your child's primary teacher. And we just have this in our head that only someone who has, you know, a, a teaching degree is going to be able to effectively teach our kids. And you know what? That's not how it has been for the vast majority of history. Our school system as we know it has only been in place for about 150 years. And studies show that the literacy rate was actually higher before the compulsory school set, um, institution was put in place. So just keep that in mind. You as the parent have always been your child's teacher, always. So. But once you start doing more structured learning with your kids, yes, it is something that you have to get used to. So transitioning and starting slowly is going to help with that. Now, another tip that I have for you is to let your kids have a say in what they are going to be learning about and how they're going to approach it. You know, and this goes beyond just watching them to see what it is that they're interested in or to see how, how they're learning things. Ask them. Have them sit down with you and come up with a plan for how you want to approach this. Because if there's one thing that I know about school is other than when you get to high school and are able to get electives or a few electives every year, for the most part, 
kids who are in school, they can't choose what, what they learn about. They don't really have a say in it. So what a fantastic freedom it is that your kids will be able to actually say, you know what, mom, I'm really, really interested in reptiles. Could we focus a lot on that this year? And for you to say yes, because chances are if they were in school, they would probably get maybe a week of reptiles, if that, depending on how old they are. So take advantage of that because again, your kids are going to focus better when it is something that they are interested in. And chances are that the areas that they want to learn about now are things that are going to possibly steer their future. So it could really have an impact on something that they decide to do when they're older. If they don't, that's fine. They still have all these years of experience and knowledge to gain from. So I don't want you to become hung up on that, that if you think that you're, if your kids have this passion and then they end up not going into it when they're older, those are not wasted years. Your kids have learned, they've retained things, and most of all, they've enjoyed learning. You know, when your kids don't have a say in what they're learning about, when you're specifically trying to follow, I know a lot of people will try to follow like what the schools do. They'll get the, the school syllabus or the school timeline, and they'll try to stick to it with their own kids at home. Um, a lot of times they just do that out of fear because they're just not really sure what it is that they should be doing as a homeschooling parent, but you don't have to do that. Yes, most states will tell you what subjects you need to cover, like you need to cover English, you need to cover math, you need to cover science, and so on, but they don't tell you specifically how you need to cover them or what you need to do in them. So just keep that in mind. You do not need to follow the syllabus of the school. And I would also say that if you have those books, like t what everything your fourth grader needs to know, or I forget what exactly what it's called, and I've actually done a video on this too. I would really try not to start treating those as if they are a Bible. Those, again, they're, they're called... I think it's everything your fourth grader needs to know and everything your fifth grader needs to know, everything your kindergartner needs to know. They are excellent resources. They can give you lots of good ideas for doing with your kids, but once you take them and start trying to follow them as if they are a recipe for homeschooling, that is when you are just kind of letting go of, of the freedom that you could have had as a parent and you're possibly going to lose your child's interest as that time goes along. So yes, definitely, definitely take into account your child's opinion when it comes to what they're going to be learning and how they're going to be doing it. So the next tip that I want to tell you is if things don't go smoothly at first, relax. I am going to tell you right away that there is no such thing as a perfect homeschool. Um, you might have really good days, but I don't think that there is any homeschooling parent out there who is being honest with you that will tell you that they never have any problems when they are homeschooling. And this is bound to happen, especially when you are a newer homeschooler, because again, you're not used to your kids being home. Your kids aren't used to being at home. You're not really sure what it is that you're doing yet. And you're just very unsure of yourselves. You probably have some fear going on. Don't worry about it. These things are going to happen. You just need to take each day as it comes. Relax, take a deep breath, and just enjoy your time with your child. Because it might take a while until you find your groove. But once you do find it, it is... It is such a tremendous feeling. Okay, um, so now the next tip that I have for you is make sure that you have some sort of a routine, but don't become a slave to it. And you know, this was actually the last video that I did. It was how we use block schedules instead of the typical time schedule that a lot of people will use. And no matter what kind of routine or schedule that you use, this is really important, especially again, for a newer homeschooler, because you need to have some sort of way to just get the ball rolling, to know what to do what what to do when to get you guys used to just working together, how you're going to do things, and just to make sure that you're getting things done every day. But, you know, if you set a time, say you're going to start at 9 o'clock, and you end up having days where you're not starting until like 9.20 or 9.30, don't freak out, you know. There are no ringing school bells in a homeschool. No one is going to hand your child the tardy slip. 
this is something that you really need to remember is that those schedules and those routines they are a guideline for you they are to give you an idea possibly a goal to shoot for but if something happens and you cannot stick to your schedule specifically as you have it let it go it's fine um again let them be a tool for you. Don't be a slave to them. But it, it, it really is important to have something in place to hold you accountable. Um, and the last tip that I have for you is if something gets in the way of you doing your homeschool plans for the day, you know, if something comes up or someone comes to visit or you end up having an appointment, that's another one of those things, you know, don't freak out. It's okay. Life happens. And you know what happens with life? learning. Learning doesn't just come in that structured time that you're sitting down with your kids. And you know, I will even say that a lot of homeschoolers don't even have that structured time where they sit down with their kids. A lot of homeschoolers will do unschooling where their kids are literally just following their interests all day long. And guess what? Those kids learn tons. So if something gets in the way of your homeschool routine for the day, you can bet that your child is still going to be learning that day. You know, there is no on and off switch in kids when it comes to learning. That, th that switch is always on, unless they're asleep. But you never know, because sometimes they could be having revelations in their dreams. You never know. I've actually, I've actually figured out math problems as I was falling asleep. Has it ever happened to you? But anyway, I'm getting off topic here. But yeah, just... Take each day as it comes and realize that even if everything is completely thrown off and nothing that you had planned happens, rest assured that it was not an unproductive day. It was not a, a day that you cannot count. Your kids learn every day. Always remember that. So anyway, I hope that this has helped you with just some ideas when you're transitioning from public school to homeschool. It's, it's a totally different thing, but once you do it, it is amazing. So anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one down below. And if you like my work, I encourage you to check out my Patreon page and see what I have for my patrons there. And I hope you have a great day.